just one week ago, Valentine's Day. Creative writing teacher Stacy LaPelle's class was playing music, writing love letters, when the fire alarm went off. As students filed into the hallway, she heard gunfire. The killing had begun. I was about two feet away from my door. All of a sudden, I heard gunshots in the stairwell, which is about 20 feet away from my room. And then kids were screaming and then running back towards me and towards the end of the hallway. So I just went in this very strange autopilot mode where I pivoted on my feet. I unlocked my door and the kids just started pouring in my room. I don't know how many kids were in there, but I was pulling them and getting them in and shouting at them to get in the room. And then I suddenly saw the shooter about 20 feet from me, standing at the end of the hallway, actively shooting down the hallway, just a barrage of bullets. And I'm staring at him thinking, why is the police here? This is strange, because he's in full metal garb, helmet, face mask, uh, bulletproof armor, shooting this rifle that I've never seen before. I don't know when I decided it was the right time to close the door. I grabbed the handle with both hands, and that's when I got nicked or grazed or whatever you call it. <laughs> so a bullet hit your arm? Yes. As I'm closing my door, I'm shouting at my next door neighbor, Mr. Scott Beagle, to close his door. And he's the kind of man that would just keep that door open a little longer. You know, he's all about the kids, you know. And, but he couldn't see the shooter. I had a good visual of him, which is why I yelled at him to shut his door now. 35-year-old teacher Scott Beagle among the 17 murdered on Marjorie Stoneman Douglas's campus. I heard him shoot a barrage of bullets into Mr. Beagle's room. And then he came to my room and shot about four or five shots into my room, breaking the glass of my door. There's a rectangular piece of glass. And I heard him continuously shooting down the hallway, down the hallway. And I never really knew when he left because we just thought he was still there. Once you all were inside the classroom, you were with your students. Yes. Covering them, kind of like a mother hen. Yes. Right? Clutching. I think I left fingerprints in one girl. <laughs> Giving eye contact to other kids who were shaking and freaking out and I'm mouthing, it's okay, it's okay. It was so quiet and then all of a sudden I hear helicopters outside far, far in the distance it seemed to me. Police officers far, far in the distance. Kids were screaming in the hallway for help. We're trained not to let anybody in the room and I, I would say a good 45 minutes went by, maybe an hour and when this, we heard the SWAT team come on the floor but I still didn't trust that it was them because they were banging on the doors, police let us in. No one got up. And then they just let themselves in and got us out. And on the way out, that's when I saw Mr. Beagle laying on the ground. And I saw um, my students laying on the ground. I lost two students and other bodies and carnage everywhere. It was the most awful sight I've ever seen. It's like from a movie. How are you dealing having seen this and it being very, very real? It's awful. You know, I've never had to deal with anything like this before. I mean, I'm a stoic person to begin with. I'm not the most emotional uh, person. And so when I sit and think and I pause about my two beloved students who were killed from that class, it's hard to live with because I love them so much like they were my kids. I've known Meadow for her since she's a 10th grader. She took my class because she wanted to have me again, my creative writing class. And Joaquin was like a son. He called me mom. And it's a heartbreaking. What are you holding on to to kind of center you and keep you moving forward and waking up every day with hope? Well, just that I survived and we survived and we have to move on. You know, you can't sit there and cower over it. You, you still have a life. So we're left here on the planet for a reason. Let's do what we're supposed to do. And if we're not sure what that is, we'll figure it out. But we're alive. And we're all thankful that she's alive, her kids as well, who attend school here. And because Stacy knew where the danger was and knew where her kids were clear across campus, she didn't worry about them, even in the midst of the shooting. Uh, but she does tell us that Joaquin, she mentioned him calling her mom, that student who died, wrote a children's book in her class, and she plans on getting it published. George. And that would be some kind of a tribute. It's hard to imagine going back into that classroom, back into that school, but the students and teachers are preparing for it. Yes, not into that particular building. Uh, right now, there are talks to have that building completely demolished. But in terms of returning back to class, staff will return this weekend. The kids go back to normal class schedule next week. But Stacy has told her students, wherever we are, no matter where the classroom is, it will be home. George. Adrian Banker, thanks very much. We heard that from the principal as well. But Adrian, let me ask you this. You you have spent quite a few days there with those students who are about to go back to school. Just give us your impression of these young people. 
They are extremely intelligent. In fact, I rode on the bus about an hour on their road to Tallahassee and talked with one of the student leaders. And they are the most uh, brilliant young people that I've ever met. They're very passionate, but they truly are in a state of shock. Mm. And their parents are as well. And they're using this mission to kind of galvanize them during a very tough time.